Welcome back everyone. Today in this screencast we're going to talk about the role of DNA. By the end of this screencast you should be familiar with the following topics. To begin with, all known living things contain DNA in some form. DNA stores information long term so that it can be passed on to an organism's offspring. This is where the central dogma of biology comes back into play. DNA contains a unique genetic code and this genetic code tells the body how to make RNA and RNA is the instructions for creating proteins and proteins are going to be what helps create the body structures. Without DNA we would not be able to make the proteins that are so essential for creating all parts of a cell and all parts of the body. We saw in our last screencast that DNA looks like this. Remember that we call this shape the double helix. If we look even more closely, we'll remember that there are two strands of DNA that run anti-parallel to one another. So one of them runs this way, and one of them runs this way. DNA is made up of phosphorus, sugars, and nitrogen bases, which are A's and T's and C's and G's. Remember also that A only pairs with T, and C only pairs with G. Before we move on, see if you can figure out what the complementary strand would be for this string of nine nucleotides. This should be what you got. This is only a tiny section of what could be an entire human genome. In reality, the human DNA molecule has about 3 billion of these base pairs, so pairs of T's and A's and C's and G's. The combinations of base pairs and the order in which they are presented is extremely important because these can code for creating certain proteins. For instance, this section of base pairs that's outlined in red might create the proteins that make the earlobe. Some of us have earlobes that dangle, and some of us have earlobes that are attached to the side of our head. If we were to change this sequence in any way, it might change the shape or size of somebody's ear. This section of DNA determines exactly which proteins are going to be made. When it does that, it determines the traits that the offspring is going to have. Much of the time, the DNA sequence is passed down from parent to child without being shuffled. This explains why you might have the same shaped nose as your parents. We call this section of DNA that determines what traits are going to be a gene. For the gene to work properly, it must have exactly the right base pairs, exactly the right number of them, and have them in exactly the right order. If any of those characteristics are confused or changed, the gene will not have the correct effect. Think of genes as anagrams, any change in the order and the meaning changes. If we look at this phrase right here about oil, we can simply rearrange the letters and the meaning changes entirely. Even small changes to the DNA sequence can cause major changes in the proteins that are made. When changes happen to the DNA, they are called mutations. Sometimes mutations can be extremely advantageous, such as an animal having a longer neck. However, sometimes they can also be highly dangerous, depending on where the mutations occur. A mutation in the part of the DNA molecule that codes for the function of the heart could potentially be extremely dangerous. Most mutations occur randomly. However, there are some environmental factors that can cause them. Some common causes of mutations are x-rays, radiation, chemicals, or simply getting older. The older you get, the more mutations tend to occur randomly, and the more they tend to be passed on every time your cells divide. This is why you often have to wear a lead apron every time you go to the dentist to have them x-ray your teeth. The x-rays can actually change the DNA inside your reproductive cells. With three billion base pairs in the human genome, carrying that around would be extremely cumbersome. This is why we use this method called the chromosome. Rather than being one long tangled molecule, the DNA does something that we call condensing. Condensing refers to the coiling up of the DNA molecule into a structure called a chromosome. The DNA molecule is twisted up and coiled around protein structures called histones. This means that the DNA molecule is very tightly packaged and it makes it much easier for it to be moved around. We will be learning a lot more about how the DNA coils and uncoils itself when we begin talking about replication.